Now we're going to go on to trial two. So it'll be the same words. Mm -hmm. Once again, read them out loud. Okay. Try to remember them. Horse. Chair. Rock. So can you remember any of the words you just read? Okay. Uh, rock. Hat. It's terrible. I said all those. Now I'm... <laughs> <laughs> let's see i just can't remember apologize dr mckee what would the outlook have been for judy if she didn't receive this treatment she would have been you know looking at um care for the rest of her life when people go into institutions they generally get sedated because it's easier to care for them and so people go into homes and they just are sedated and cared for until they die I'll be able to run my life now. So, yeah, I get my independence back and I have my mind back and you know, that's worth everything. And then look at Carolyn. She sat in the chair for three years, gazing at a wall. We didn't even, people didn't even know if she even knew that they were there or not. She couldn't walk, she couldn't talk. I just got an update from her husband the other day that he had her sitting on the edge of the bed and he was getting her ready for bed. He turned around for a second, she got up and walked away. Is Alzheimer's something that people in general can recover from? Yes, they can. You know, they really, really can. We see people recover, you know, some really fast, some a little bit slower, but they're recovering. So what's happening in Alzheimer's, what we're seeing is an age-associated internal nutrient deficiency. In 2007, Dr. Dane Goodenow identified loss of the cell nutrient plasmalogen as the prime cause of Alzheimer's disease. Since then, he has shown that plasmalogens can be restored to revive brain health and function. But that is only one part of the equation, as he and his team have discovered. We can restore the biochemical function. We can begin the recovery phase. But to really, truly complete the recovery, you need to be rehabilitated. For Alzheimer's Key to Cure Part 3, we'll look into and beyond the body's biochemistry to what it means at a deeply human level to live a healthy and full life, and how that is being revived for people once thought terminally ill. Welcome to Vital Signs, where we learn how to get healthier from all angles, from the biochemical and nutritional to the things we do that nourish our minds and our souls. I'm Brendan Fallon. Dr. Goodenow has spent decades researching the biochemistry of neurological disorders, including Alzheimer's disease, ALS, and autism. Links to his research and his book, Breaking Alzheimer's, can be found in the description below. So what's happening in Alzheimer's, and what's happening with this plasmalogen deficiency, what we're seeing is an age-associated internal nutrient deficiency. The good news is that we can restore that. We can do biochemical restoration. We can measure that restoration and put people into a, a biochemical state of low risk. Now, the next phase is, what are you going to do with your new brain? Like how, you know, you know, you have to have a purpose in life. You have to find a way to get back into the world. Because if you don't have a purpose, I tell people this all the time, people who don't have a purpose don't live very long because you have to have a reason to get up in the morning. So I always tell people when, you, when you're thinking about curing something or getting better from something, there's really three phases of it. There's the restoration phase. Can I restore normality or, or health? Then I got to recover from whatever damage I have sustained. And then I have to rehabilitate into my world again. I spoke to Jana Horsnell, who is co-founder and the CEO of the Dr. Goodenow Lakeview Wellness Center in Saskatchewan. I wanted to understand how the center is advancing people's recovery from Alzheimer's disease and other neurological disorders. Jana, welcome to Vital Signs. Thank you. You've largely applied a drug rehabilitation model there at the Lakeview Wellness Center. I'm interested to know what is the common denominator between someone who's recovering from drug addiction and someone recovering from dementia or another illness that may see them there at the wellness center? I think the most important part is people who've had addictions of any kind, you know, they lose themselves too. Just like somebody who's in dementia or somebody that has other types of diseases, they've lost their relationships with people, they've lost the ability to think properly. You know, people see people sometimes with their addictions, but they don't understand that they've lost sometimes years of their life that they don't really remember um, and they don't want to remember because they've, you know, they've been through a lot of trauma and different things in their life. So their rehabilitation is the same type. You're helping them get through the trauma, the guilt, the shame. But as they're taking the plasmogens and as these things are starting to get repaired, 
they need that help in sorting through all the, the thoughts that come because it's not, you know, like you're repairing, but you still need to have help with processing your thoughts until your mind is getting clearer and clearer. I also spoke to Tracy Zimmerman to understand how the center is rehabilitating people to be more functional in their lives. She is co-founder of the Lakeview Wellness Center, working closely with patients in their recovery. So the plasmalogens, they can help someone to recover on the biochemical side, but how do you help someone to recover from the damage to their lives and to their relationships caused by their illness? You know, listening to them, letting them talk, and, you know, and also reminding them that it's, it's not their fault, right? And then supporting them and setting goals and helping them to achieve those goals, those new goals, and then not living in the past. Right. And trying to focus more on being in the present moment. And that's where the most peaceful place to live is and just really kind of bringing them back to the present moment. What was that situation? What, where was she at when she first came to the center? Well, she was really withdrawn. And so Dwight, you did most of the talking for her. You know, she was really forgetful. And you know, she was dealing with the, the loss of her husband as well. And so there was you know, a lot of grief there and, and trauma. And that was something that Jana really uh, supported her through as well. When she first came in, she had a lot of, um, like she'd shuffle. She was very vacant. She was dealing with a lot of grief. She wasn't sure. She had trouble even making herself a cup of coffee. Like she would go to the coffee machine and play a few times, but not remember what she was doing. Dr. McKee, what would the outlook have been for Judy if she didn't receive this treatment? She would have been, you know, looking at um, care for the rest of her life. When people go into institutions, they generally get sedated because it's easier to care for them. And so people go into homes and they just are sedated and cared for until they die. Well, people were telling me I had memory problems and I didn't believe it. You know, it, it, I seemed still what I call normal in my mind, but I had the feedback from the other people because I think with dementia, you have to depend upon the feedback of others because you have no thoughts. You have no memories of what happened in the past. Her husband, Bob, died in his sleep in uh, June of 22. And it wasn't until Bob died that I realized that there were serious issues with Judy. She was suicidally depressed. She didn't even realize that she had become alcohol dependent. She had always been a wine drinker and that had just, you know, kind of snuck up on her over the years. And after Bob died, she was, you know, drinking much more than usual to sleep and in her grief and, and the, the sudden turnover of her world because her world had been taking care of Bob. I also asked that she get an MRI of her brain and they read it as white matter disease, meaning that there uh, was evidence on the MRI of degradation of what's called myelin. Myelin is the insulation of the nerves. And when you lose the insulation, then you start to have short outs, like the wires get crossed. In, in Judy's case, it affected her short-term memory. Would you say Judy has a diagnosis or she had a diagnosis of dementia? You could diagnose her under that umbrella of dementia because she had lost a major brain function, which was short-term memory. 